Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. All right, guys, so let's move on and let's discuss the film strip, which is the bottom panel on your Lightroom interface. Now, the film strip is actually the only navigational constant within Lightroom, meaning that regardless of what uh, module you're in, whether you're in library, develop, map, etc., it's going to be the exact same film strip that you see in every single module. And I'll show you guys right now. We're going to hit Control Alt 2 to go to the develop module or Command Alt 2 on a Mac. And you can see that the film strip doesn't change. Control Alt 3 to go to the map view, book view, slideshow view, it's all the same. And the reason for that is because we need something that is constantly there to be able to help us navigate from image to image and to be able to quickly filter and just act as a quick resource throughout each module. And that's going to be your film strip. So let's discuss the film strip and we're going to start with this top bar that goes across the film strip starting with the left side. Now on this left side we have an option for main window and secondary window. Now if you click the main window it's going to give you your options to switch up the different views. So we can switch from grid to loop to compare to survey and it'll tell you the shortcuts to get there as well. We can also toggle the different full screen modes and we know that we can do that as well because we talked about it before by hitting F. So F will actually toggle our different full screen views. But if you guys forget you guys can always go down to this bottom left main window and switch up views from here as well. So we've learned I think like five different ways to switch our views which is kind of crazy but that's how Lightroom works. It gives you tons of different options to do whatever it is that you want to do and you pick the one that you like the most whether it be with hotkeys uh, or shortcuts or whether it be menu items or clicking on icons whatever it is. The next option that we have available is the secondary display, the secondary window. So we can get there by actually hitting shift E and Shifty is going to open up Lightroom's secondary display which gives us a second view uh, that we can customize. Now this is extremely useful if you guys have multiple displays hooked up to your computer. If you don't then it's not so useful but in this tutorial because we can't do if we record multiple displays it's going to slow down our Camtasia recording significantly so we're not going to show uh, the secondary display I'm just going to show you how it works while leaving it here on this uh, primary display area. But normally you would drag this off the screen onto your secondary display. Now, here's how it works. The secondary display gives you another set of options that you guys can use to kind of help you during your uh, you know, organization or, or during your workflow, basically. So, for example, what I like to do is when I'm calling, if I have, say, 10 portraits that are almost the exact same, I like to keep my main view on this grid view, and I might increase the size a little bit by hitting plus. And then on my secondary display, I'll keep it in loop view. And so loop view will display that image regardless of what image I'm cycling to in full size and full uh, like that as that full preview size in my secondary display. So when I'm comparing say five different portraits that are very similar, it's very easy to look through them and just pick out the best one and then reject all the other ones. Now we can change the different view modes in the secondary display similar to how we would in our primary display. You guys might remember that to get to the grid view in our primary display we hit G. Well, to get to it in the secondary display, all you do is you hit Shift G. So if I hit Shift G now, it'll switch the secondary display to grid view, and it automatically toggles my primary display to loop view because Lightroom recognizes that, well, I probably don't need to see two different grid views uh, to see the exact same thing on both monitors. So let me switch one up to loop view. So it switches my primary display back to loop view, and now I can use my secondary display to navigate as my thumbnail view. Same thing, if I want to go back to loop view, I hit Shift E. If I want to go to compare view, I can hit Shift C. And if I want to go to survey view, I can hit Shift N. Now, we have a few other options which I want to show you guys. I'm going to hit G to go back to my uh, grid view on my main monitor. I'm going to hit Shift E to go to my loop view on my secondary display. Now what I'm going to do is show you what these keys on the right do. Now this normal view, which is gets toggled every time you activate the secondary display, this is just the default view. So when you hit Shift E, it's going to automatically choose normal. And what that does is it'll automatically display in this secondary display whatever image is selected. So any image that's selected is going to be what's shown. Now if we switch it to live view, and you can do that by hitting Shift Z, it's going to switch to live loop. And what that does is it allows you to see whatever your mouse is over at the time. So it's kind of a quicker way of just browsing through images because you don't have to use the left and right arrows to navigate or click on an image to navigate. You just mouse over and you can see a preview of that image. Now going on to the next mode is locked mode and we can get there by hitting control, shift and enter or command, shift and enter on a Mac. And this is going to lock the second window to whatever image that we have selected in our primary window. So now when I try and switch, it's in locked view so it doesn't switch that image up.
So this is a great tool for actually comparing. Uh, you know, you can pick an image to lock, and you can compare it against multiple other images that might be similar and looking for you know a, a better image. You can also do a similar thing with the compare view, but this allows you to compare images across displays versus in the same in the same window. All right, so I'm going to hit Shift E to switch back to normal view, and uh, now whatever we click is going to change the display in our secondary display. And let's go down to the bottom of this window. At the bottom of the window, we have the option to select a recent source. Now, this is, works the exact same way as it does right here. We have the same option to select a recent source here, which is just going to change what images are going to be displayed. And we're going to actually go over this in just a second when we get to this portion of the film strip. So we don't need to talk about it more here because it works the exact same way. The next option that we have is these fit fill one to one and three to one the just the different zoom ratios that we had the same exact thing and it works the same exact way as it did in the navigator panel when we discussed that so if you want to switch up the zoom levels you can choose whatever level you want for your secondary display here all right guys so i'm going to hit shift e again and this is going to close up the secondary display and let's go to the next option we see, which is this grid view right here. Now all this is, is it's just a quick shortcut to get to the grid view. If you're already in the grid view, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and I don't find this particularly useful because I'm usually using shortcuts to navigate between my different views anyway. But if you guys forget and you're in your loop view, then if you click this button, it will take you back to the library grid. The nice thing about this is that when you're in a different module, like for example, if you're in the book module, clicking this button will also take you back to the library module and to the grid view. So if you're in a different module and you forget the shortcut to go back to the library module, then you can use that as well to get you back. This left and right right next to it is just to go back and go forward. Whatever you did before, whether it's switching a module, whether it's you know whatever you did, going back to another image, you can hit go back and go forward. Again, not particularly useful for me uh, because if I do want to go back or go forward, I'm usually using the Control Z or Command Z shortcut to undo or Control Shift Z, which is to go forward. So Control Shift Z or Command Shift Z on a Mac. All right, now the next option we have is the source option that we were talking about a second ago in that secondary display. Now clicking on this will give me a bunch of quick, uh, quick view options to select a source. It's kind of the same way when, remember when we said we need to select all of our images again, so we went back to our folder view and selected originals to be able to see everything. Because say for example you're looking in one of the collections uh, from right here, you want to be able to see all the images again. The quickest way to do that is just to click on originals or you can also click on catalog and say all photographs. These are just different collections basically of the images that are within our catalog. Well, we can also navigate these quickly by just clicking here in this all photographs listing where we can see basically different recent sources as well as quick collections as well as whatever previous imports. And it just allows us to quickly navigate back to whatever view that we want to be able to see certain images. So if I click quick collections, it'll show me that. It's the exact same thing as if I were to click it up here. So yet again, another option to be able to switch up our views and define the exact collection or view that we're looking for with our images. All right, so let's go back to the all photograph view. And since we just learned about this tool right here, we're gonna use it to select all photographs. Now we can see everything again in our catalog. And let's go to the next video where we're gonna finish up the film strip.